I've got climbed up onto this top of this bridge and now I've got to try and get over this fence. I felt myself falling. If I'd have felt it left, it'd have been about a 50 foot drop onto concrete. <gasps> I've kind of like, as I'm falling, I've kind of had to kind of like throw my body to the right and like, I've hurt myself. And nobody would have even known who I did, but luckily I managed to fucking get up after about 10 minutes of laying here in agony. What, 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 you know, winded yourself or worse? No, I just fucked all my leg up. Fuck. But I was just like relieved that I'd not felt it left, because like I said, I won't be here. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official dot com. You need the Television app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Box created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be. Hooray! Um, big shout out to our uh, sponsors, Old Tight, Graffiti Kings.co.uk. Big shout out to NoPoland.com and of course strainstation.co.uk. Big shout out to all the regulars that check in, sharing is caring, you're telling a friend to tell a friend. Um, and today's episode uh, is no exception when it comes to the deep dive into the darkest layers and whatnots of the UK. We got a guy who came all the way down from Sheffield to be a part of this on his 40th stint around the graffiti sun making his uh, introduction on the podcast from Sheffield big shout out to all my Sheffield crew you know you are and what we're doing I've done plenty of podcasts there's loads more in the archives you can go and check out from my northern quarters but yo Sheffield's very own man ACT act risk inside the place how are you my brother yes brother crazy yes. crazy lineage bro 40 years in the game yeah, man, you know that, innit? <laughs> it's so good to have you on board. How are you? It's, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, you've been keeping all right? Yeah, kind of. Just just, just getting ready to smash things, innit? Smash things. And at this point, I'm a big shout-out, Pulse, for connecting the dots. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's great to have someone come down, come down from other parts. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys... Sheffield holds so much value and not just in steel but also in the buses it, it, street bombing I mean you guys are ferocious from the beginning of the 80s onwards right yeah Sheffield steals fucking anything that moves really anything I can think of original old school vet yeah the original we're gonna jump straight into it I ain't playing very rare like I say do we get a chance to sit down here down in the south south and have a chat um, with somebody that is clearly cut chops um, across the 80s made a lot of noise and impacted at a time when Sheffield was absolutely bombed the fuck it was mm. destroyed um, let's touch on it man let's get into it back in there fucking everything was brand new everything was like getting originated we were like just it was just fucking top experience coming across new pains eating new things trying new things breaking in yards for first times just the whole thing for the know. first generation of writer that must have been absolutely insane yeah because back then i mean like buses were like sheffield's main thing mm. And um, I mean, like the old graffiti before we start like pieces and stuff, but everything went inside buses. So when it will start breaking into bus yards, like main intention was to like be eating sides and throw up pieces, I up tags, just eating bombing them to bits, really knocking them out. Yeah, yeah. I think Sheffield for me, and my, most like a lot of uh, cities, um, the the more 
northern quarters of the cities, Manchester, Nottingham, um, you know, Yorkshire areas, Liverpool, like the, there was a rife like bus scene as well as train scene. There was a lot of street bombing. It was, you know, because obviously down here we have the tubes, but Sheffield had the, uh, the trams as well, didn't it? Yeah, the trams, they came later on. Mm. Um, I, I can't understand why they're not getting it though as much. Like, I mean, it's like, when they first started, I had a flat, like, what looked over to the train station and um, one of the first tram lines ran past back at train station. And I can remember going out I've just done a couple of throw-ups and things on the train on the trams. But there's 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 no no pieces on them or nothing. Like, I mean, if I never stopped for like a bit due to other things, I know that would have been my first target to be like getting into them yards and piecing them. I mean, like there were a few bus yards in Sheffield. And um I mean it was one about half a mile from me. Yeah, I was the only person to ever go into that bush yard. I did take a couple of people down with me, but they, won't, they didn't dare go in. Mm. And um, that was the first day when I did full throws down full sides of buses. And like, back then, never had no cameras or able to get photos. Mm-hmm. Um, but like a year or two later, like I can remember like speaking to somebody when we'd started the writers' bench. And they were telling me like about the time when uh, they were in the parents' house and they looked out a window and they would seen a full side of a bus with my throat, full side, go past, they were like buzzing. <laughs> so I was so glad that people had seen <laughs> from this particular yard because that run on certain lines. <laughs> Whereas Act's main, our main um, route, our line, from a, a bus yard, other side of town from us, but then buses run all the areas where all acts lived. Mm. So that was the main bus yard, what we used to hit regular to do pieces as well, as like throws and tags I up from our sides. Mm. But, um, yeah. I get the inkling that you were into you were into different things as well. You were into football. You were into music and punk and sound system and and whatnot before a lot of the graph related stuff came into play, right? Yeah. Um, what got me doing graph first before the hip hop before the New York hip hop scene come? Be- well, where my both my parents worked, yeah, and because the age group, I was the youngest kid. And there was like a ten year gap. So from your infant school and uh, junior school, people either get picked up from their parents after school or it's like walkable distance home. But because both my parents worked in the local shop, I had to get bus free bus stops home. So I had to see like buses covering graffiti with permanent pens. Upstairs, it were all like skinheads, punks, mods, like National Front, all shit like that back right <laughs> them days. And um, I was like, I was just kind of obsessed from them days because I was seeing two names, like, because nobody knew the term all city then, like, until like the New York thing come. Mm-hmm. But I was seeing this like name um, men- mental and this other name Soske. Mental and, um, Soske. Wow. One name Soske. He said Soske skins. Wow. Okay. And another one mental punks. Well, I used to think, what the fuck is this? Because I kept seeing it, yeah. and I kept thinking it must be same bus. And then I kept seeing it on lamppost and bus stop, and I kept thinking, what the fuck? And then I realised, like everywhere I went, I was seeing these names, and because. Mm. This mental, when I went in from infants into junior school, as I was in the first year, he was in the fourth year. So he called mental, so I knew him, so I knew it was this one person. Really? So you so, knew him personally? Yeah. Wow. So 
I started writing my like, name. You know, like, we didn't have a tag on mm-hmm. then. I was writing my name just on bus with permanent pens because I had access to permanent pens because my, my sister's like were a 10-year gap. Mm. So they were allowed to have permanent pens. And plus my dad had them in the shop to do his signs. So whereas like kids my age were like choosing felted pens, not permanent pens, but then I was like getting permanent pens and going to write my name on lampposts and bus stops. Just like I said, this before, like hip hop and anything. yeah, yeah, because punk really had a, a bit of a hold on that. There, there was it was a lot of quite a lot of politically charged yeah. ta- tagging and um, yeah. and you know, almost like for the sake of it, throwing just like quotes and political slander on on walls, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, even I can even remember like from the comic books. And um, I used to get my comic every week, Beano. And um, in my Beano book, I can always remember, like, they were um, a bit... Uh, a, a wall. Kilroy was here. Mm. Um, so, as long as I've known, there's always been graffiti about in Sheffield. Mm. But it's just, like, different to what graffiti, what we, like, know as the hip-hop, mm. New York sort of scene peace in and mm. and tags and throbs and all that kind of stuff mm. but mm. really and truly it's just pre- like it's just really it's like the same it's just pre- just like New York started the same innit it's just mm. like that was just like if you like looking old things it's the old um, same kind of graffiti about before the, the letters started getting bigger mm. and, was that easy? Was that an easy transition for you, going from, you know, tag to, to big bubbles and things like that? Was that? It was for me because because of the age group, the age difference between me and my sisters and my brother-in-laws. So um, I was like learning <clears throat> how to do my name in bubble mm. letters because they were doing them and because, like I said, my parents were always at work. So I was always, like, around older people. So <clears throat> I was, like, learning things 10 years my age, really. Mm-hmm. Even, like, football. I was, like, going, like, football matches. Because, like, I was bigger as well. I was bigger in our class. So I could, like, get in... Um, if I were my like, sisters and brothers-in-laws... I could get in movies like where I wasn't old enough to because I was bigger and because I was with them. Or I can remember like, I used to go to football matches down in London in like 80, 81, when I was like 11. No way. And I was like, after matches they go going to pub, we'd get last train back. I'd be like walking around King's Cross, St Pancras, like used to be like just on my own mm. at night time at that age. Just like looking around, knowing that football fans are going to be meeting around here for for a fight, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, still watching it at that age. Did you get into them? Did you actually like? Yeah, like uh, part of Chef United's Blaze business crew. Yeah, right. And, um, being all over England, really fighting and stuff. I yeah. find that I find that culture so curious because I'm not really a football man, you see. So. No. Um, I've had a few people, big shout I'm not going to shout them out, but yeah, you know you are. You've been on the podcast before and, uh, yeah, expressed interest. I mean, it's a, it's a lawlessness, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just like... That's, I think it's just some kind of... Something to rebel or something to just get your feelings out or your yeah, anger out or mm. your yeah, emotions out or... I just don't know. Mm. I just bought maybe... Being part of a crew or something, or I mean, it's always been like from school. Like we used to fight over schools, and like in them days, mm. I, don't know if, I don't know if it still goes on fighting over schools. Like, but when I was like young, I think that's that was part of mm. being at school, fighting over schools, and then then like I said, that went into football, and mm. but like I said, um, the graffiti. Like I said, that's why I get. That's why I, I always like ahead. Like ten years, man. 
when I shouldn't have been really doing things. Mm. So, like I said, I was like learning bubble letters. So, all my school books, I was like writing my name or football team or mm-hmm. mods or punks or just in letters. Or um, I'd just copy like letters for things like selector or specials or anything. Mm-hmm. Or letters off of Sex Pistols albums. So we're always into like doing letters from learning from like. From popular culture, whatever's yeah. been the, the, the door so, of the day, yeah. So when the, the um, New York thing come, I was kind of basically doing letters and I would write my name anyhow, but from an attack. Mm. Even like my first two pieces. I didn't have a tag, I've just done two things um, before I've even got a tag. Um, like my wrist. Mm-hmm. And then like the, the wrist, the wrist one piece, that was my third piece. So um, risk has always been your name from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. Who um who uh who forged the uh the crew um act, ACT? There were three of us who started. They were like me, Cash, um, this. Um, we were like, me and Cash is just called for uh, this. This is where we're going to we'll start up a bombing crew. So then, so yeah, we'll make a bombing crew. Big up so, Des, uh, by the way. Big up Des. Cash, and then we let like Mercury, because he was like one of our boys. So then, nice. there were four of us. We were the first four. Big up Cash, big up Mercury. Yeah, man. Oh. So when was this? What 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 year was this? Act about I think it was about eighty five and end of eighty five when we started the act. Wow. Because before we like I said before we started it, the four of us what we used to go out bombing. We used mm. to call them rainbow buses. They'd all have a different colour. We used to just like be running up behind buses as they were running. We like got this spot where there were like about four different bus lines. So we were like running from one road to next road to next road, backwards forward, backwards forward, hitting, sneaking up behind them, just hitting them from our sides as they were running. We like nicknamed them rainbow buses. It's a lot of a different colour. And then, like I say, um, we form acts just a little bit after that. What other crews were around at this time? Because, like I said, at the very top, Sheffield has always, in my mind anyway, through the time that I've been into painting, has been, it's, it's been up there with the Birmingham's, Bristol's, London's, Brighton's. You know, it, it's an established place where it got hit severely with, uh, with Graf and bombing, bombing and writing. So what other, what other crews were around at the time when you formed ACT? Um, um, the, first, the first crew I was in, like, because I used to, before I like, joined ACT, the first crew I was in was Death Squad. And they were king for Asian artists. Um, There were like a lot of crews about, and then from out, then there were um, ATD. ATD, yeah. Yeah, um, BTV. <laughs> there were a few crews there, um, there were King Four. Mm-hmm. They were like um, one of the first crews as well, um, but were also this. Nice. First competition. But um, like I said, um, Foster and them, he joined uh, FSA Freestyle Artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were like TD. Well, they were TDA and then they changed to TDK. Mm-hmm. But, Which stood for TDA to, to TDK? TDA stood for Total Destructive Art. But then... They were split and they changed it to 
total destructive kings. <laughs> you know, and um, then a couple of people like got let in who, who I'd had wars with. So I, I went in that. That's when we, we had FSA, like I say. Um, because I'd had like um, a war with Easel. Right. So Easel like joined the TDK. You were like not having that. Uh, fuck that. Uh, Sheffield has got wars upon wars. You guys love a good scuff, don't you? Like, oh, there's always like, there's always like beef going on. That like, <laughs> it's more beef than Dele up there. <laughs> what is that? What is it? Is it in the water or something? I don't know. Fucking. Can't you all just get along? <laughs> well, uh, you know what it is. I, the first war I had was like against Diesel, like. Started off, he wasn't even started off by me. He like done a character and um, some mean acts had done an act over his head. So he fought over me. So um, he was paying like two other kids, kinds of bunt like to try and test me. But, so he was he was paying people off with bunt like to go over you. Yeah, so they were like three against me, which they still come test me. This was only gonna be one winner there and yeah. It's like fucking day of a prayer. Wow. I was like using shitty pen. I was racking jubi clear every day and tossing them out with like just drips. And you still rack now? This is this is, you 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 don't pay for paint now even now, do you? No, I ain't got the money to to be buying all this paint. I like I've like when I come out of jail twelve years ago, I, I stopped everything, stopped doing whatever I was doing to make money. And start painting. And it's all this new pain. And some people were like, give me like pain. Like some of my friends like helping me, like Jaya. I just break Jaya. He saw me at Lords. I'll touch Jaya, yeah. Um, but like, I want, I've been spending money to like be buying like pain. And um, I just fucking, I just rack it the old same way as I've always done it. Mm. When it comes to wrecking pain, I would have master. Really quick. Uh, it's just like if we ever used, we used to come down London to buy paint from Kilburn cause we, when you could buy pink paint down here. And I'd still fucking wreck pain from that shop as I bought a few. Hmm. Same method. Hmm. Um, yeah, the beef thing with Sheffield. And the transfer of that information in a number of documentaries, one being Graffiti Wars, which is where my introduction to Sheffield comes in. And, you know, we spoke about it before, yeah, before we got on here. But, you know, I was, I was just so in awe of the, the fact that, 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 that this, this scene was, was so thriving. And it was really dynamic. I felt like... You know, it came around the same time as Kings and Toys documentary, but I felt for Sheffield, it, it had a lot more... Um, it was almost like it had more storyline to it. There was a lot more... There was a lot more fault lines that led to different things and just just generally an, 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 a, a more well-rounded um, graffiti scene that had a lot of hip-hop influence to it. There's been, like... Like I said, there's been that war... What we're on about, but then there's been the graffiti was what we're on about on TV, um, which um, to say the truth, I don't even really, really get that because one of one of the people's like against the others because they're trying to get legal stuff. I just don't get that because. I don't know if there's been some 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 other fall out or added to it or what, but or it might be the fact that um they the ones who were trying to make things legal, they fucked stuff up by mm. back uh, two faced back stabbing the uh, they fucked things up like with Wolverhampton. I mean there's been like wars going off now. Just like everybody's going over each other and it's just causing wars. I just can't see the point. 
if anybody ever tried to test me, I'd just fucking wipe them out anyhow. But, like, me, I'm not into that. I'm just like, I'm just like into, no, I'm just like, if youngsters come up to me and, oh, what, you're a risk, like, oh, fuck, and they're happy to meet me and mm. nobody goes over me. Like, I don't know if because they know what had happened to them back in the day. Mm. But now, I've calmed down. I just, I just like, I don't need to have no wars with anybody. Like, show respect to youngsters and, like, get respect of them and, like, see how they, like, they know, like, they appreciate the work I've put in for, like, 40 years. Mm. 40 years, man. 40 years of a legacy. Let's get in some stories, man. Let's get in some uh, some classic stories from the vaults. Um, you guys... Uh, uh, you Northerners, you love travelling, and I, I can understand why because everything is kind of loosely connected in a way. Um, you mentioned Wolverhampton there, and by the way, by the way, before we get into this, uh, do not try this at home. People die for doing things in illegal places. All right, that's the clause. This is a nice little story. You understand? We like stories, cowboys and Indians, things like that. Let's get in some. Uh, let's get into some graphic <laughs> story. Uh, York. Um... We do a big fallout. I mean, like, I think it was part two from York who set up that exhibition, like, so... Big up part two, yeah. Uh, under some car parks. Um, so people all over went. Um, and back then, um, we used to get on with, like, Goldie and that from Wolverhampton. Um, we were in UGF. But, like, that day, like... We've took loads, like there was loads from Sheffield, we just caused chaos. We just, the trains have got hammered going up. We've just wrecked every fucking thing, cleared shops out, everything, bombed place. So police are all trying to stop people, checking their hands on the way back, if they've got paint on their hands. And, and then there's like trouble with like Wolverhampton, they've got a coach load. Because Goldie's paints had it robbed off one of the Sheffield lads, so Oh he had his paint rubbed? Yeah, yeah. so Goldie couldn't finish his piece. Um he ended me fuck the 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 cans the, the paint stealers. Um but so then it come to like fucking we were gonna be fighting their coach, but it was like loads of us or it would only been one minute there, but before that, we were getting on with them. Mm. But, um, yeah, everything was getting ransacked. Everything's got... York, like, it's like a tourist place. It's, it's very just, pretty, it's very pretty yeah, place, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a, like a tourist, like, beautiful spot to go, is it? But, <laughs> like I say, <laughs> sh shops were just getting wrecked to death. Really? Yeah, it's, and like I said, it, it's got vandalised. Every train got done on way up. We're hanging out windows. Really? What? Yeah, and what? As it's moving, just yeah. Like, cause back then, like, I mean, now windows you can't open windows on trains now. But back then, you used to be able to like hang out. You used to be able to open the front of the doors. Yeah. Just putting your hand in the window. Yeah. The window. Those slam shut doors were no joke. Because, so I mean, amples of opportunity of that time to. Oh. Do that sort of thing, I guess. I can remember nearly fucking losing my hand one time, hanging my arm out of the window. Really? Like in a, a fucking branch. Like, it, it <gasps> hit my hand as I was stuck in heart. I never stuck my hand out as far as after that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Uh, no way. I mean, it's a risky game, this. I mean, you must have had some really near-death near experiences. Oh, uh, I've done I've had a few. Really? Give us some more. Yeah. I can remember like doing like around these train tracks on this high up bridge and it's like um like main road goes underneath the bridge. So I've done something on the bridge, on the tracks, but then where the where the side of the walls what run parallel with the road and what goes underneath the bridge. I thought, right, I'll, I'll climb over this fence. It was fenced off um, to climb to this wall because then you'd be able to see it off at road. Hmm. I've climbed up onto this top of this bridge 
And then I want to try and get over this fence. I felt myself falling. If I felt it left, it'd have been about a 50 foot drop onto concrete. <gasps> I've kind of like, as I'm falling, I've kind of had to kind of like throw my body to the right. And like, I've hurt myself. And nobody would have even known who I did. But luckily I managed to fucking get up after about 10 minutes of laying here in agony. What, 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 what are you doing? Winded yourself or worse? No, I just fucked all my leg up. Fuck. But I was just like relieved that I'd not felt it left. Because like I said, I won't be here. Whoa. That must have been an impulsive move just to kind of clear. <sighs> yeah, I'm mad. Like I say, I just. I don't even know. I just know I'm falling. And I've kind of, I don't even know. I've done some kind of. I must have. I don't know. Some kind of twist to throw me way to the right. And I've just gone flying to the right. Um, another one I've done. When I've come out. I've just come out. <coughs> Um, from jail, and um, I thought, right, I'll show him who's back. So I've seen this. I'll show him who's back. <laughs> Good. So I've seen this, like, spot, like, near Wicker, on, like, four lanes of traffic, under viaduct. So I've climbed up, and it's like a corrugated um, roof to get to this ledge. Mm. One, I didn't realise until I'd got on it that I'd had to spread all my weight to... So once I'd started, I fucking I thought, wait, to turn back, it's just as dangerous, so I thought, fuck it, I'm going to drop from one when the fucking leech try and get to do it. So I'm just fucking... i had to spread all my weight as I'm going, I can feel it creaking and... The framework, how it's all built, this thing I've had to climb up. The roof is gone just onto like a ledge. Mm -hmm. Only about an inch. Yeah. And it's crazy. And it's, it's all going in. And like. What? what, what it's, it's not. It's uneven. It's, it's all kind yeah. of like. Like bowed. It's, it's all bowed and shit. Yeah, it's just like. It must have just got like a, a bit of a framework mm. with corrugated. Corrugation. Yeah. Okay, so corrugated there's just metal. nothing yeah. in the middle. Mm. And so it's just going. Yeah. You can hear it and feel it going through because mm. I'm trying to spread my weight. Oh, God, that must be horrible. Fucking, yeah. And like, I was just so relieved just to fucking get to it. But then I've, I've got to still come back. There's no way off it. Yeah. So I've had to do it, and then when I've fucking finally got to the edge to climb back down, because I've got a rucksack on it, mm -hmm. I've ended up fucking getting down side of it, and then my rucksack's got caught in his fence, oh, and I'm fucking kind of pinned up, and it's like on four lanes of busy traffic, <gasps> and I'm thinking, I'm fucking, so I can't fucking. Yeah. I thought, I've just kind of survived that, and I'm now nah, pinned up with my rucksack. But I thought he'd be there forever, that. <laughs> I thought he'll never, like, get buffed. But then... Um, You'll be there while he's getting buffed. I'm still here. So <laughs> Niche took it over a few years later. Who did? Niche. They okay. reopened Niche. Yeah. But a different place. So they must have had all scaffolding put up. Right. It's the only way you could have ever got back to that spot safely. Um, mm. One day I went down and it was just gone. After a few years, I was shocked. Wow. Mm. Wow. What other, um, what other uh, tours did you do? Because I know you're yeah. affiliated with Nottingham. Big shout out to Pulse. Yeah. Oh, ILC, Nottingham. that guy. Nottingham. Mm. Mm. I used to go down and see Pops a lot. Mm. But one day me and Joke, we just got last, we caught last coach down. We've got a big bag of paint each. Caught last coach to Nottingham. Not told them we were going. Mm. And then... Basically, it's like just walked all night until this fucking bag of paint we've got each just ran out. And then we ended up going to um, a blues in ice and green just to pass a bit of time because until coach is back to mm. Sheffield day after. Um, and then we've ended up sleeping in a bin room freezing 
just to fucking until um, buses goes back home Sheffield. Mm. And then day after, Pops is rang up saying, fucking hell, what the fuck, have you managed to do that? Like, we've fucking hammered it. Like, I'm on about, like, all over, but really? also at town centre. We've just, like, hammered it and... Um, even, like, online coming out, is like... But then I did this dub under this... Um, like, under this flyover sort of type thing. Mm. Um, and all night come rise, like, years later, like, if I ever told any night come rise, they all say, oh, I can remember that fucking wrist piece you did. You were the first one to do that. And now it's like a main spot where all night come rise go on. They all paint this spot now. But they all go on about, I was first one to, like, paint under there, this wrist dub. <sighs> Set pace, set the pace. Yeah. I love Nottingham, me. I love Nottingham. You had Dash, Baps, Pulse. I mean, like, yeah. Alert. Oh, loads of loads of writers from around there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, Pulse, right. Met them, like, the early 80s at uh, my jam at Clifton. Mm-hmm. And I met Pops. Score was there. Yeah. I went to do a... Um, Old tight score. Yeah, man, score. Yeah. I like score, man. Yeah, you I, were saying that you're a really big fan of, of his, his yeah. lettering and yeah, his art. Yeah, he is. I went to do um, something down at Lakeside, Essex, mm. and um, that's when I kind of just started painting again. And um, he's come up to me with Merck, saying, like, oh, it's me, score, like, oh, I met you at uh, that um, early 80s jam at Clifton. It just made me day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's made me day, but just by a score coming up and saying that and pick up a score, man. Good lad, it's man. It's jams back in the day. Like, I mean, school was definitely one of the, the kind of characters that would frequent in as many as possible, but, you know, uh, whether it's like the Unity Jams or like you say, the one in Clifton, it's like people just used to, to me it seems anyway for the UK, is people used to readily go out and, and meet in different places and do... Do graph right? That was just that was more of a done thing than it is now, really. Yeah, um, in Manchester, fucking, um, I can remember like doing something in in Hume. Mm. That was a wicked down that it went on for two days. Um, that was was that that location where it was like disused houses for ages? Yeah, fucking, that, yeah, that was crazy. That like, I would do mine. I didn't realise that they were like squatters like living there until an hour or something after I've painted and then suddenly like these faces popped up like what oh, no the fuck you know? wouldn't you never guess and, wow. Yeah, you know, and the next minute it turned into like a big illegal rave. Some sound systems just got set up. All these cars had been shoved just to block roads off. It was mad. Wicked. Or well, rave or, or... Like, yeah, there was everybody just, like, raving, dancing and that, like, just going and partying and that, mad. Right to get back, I had to, like, do... Back then, I was, like, involved in other things, like, to make money and things, so I had to get back to, like, do certain things so I could only stay, like, that one day, but it went on for two days. Um, you say you're very, you're a very curious character, Risk. I, I find that, like... Graffiti for you is, it was a creative outlet, but it, it, it had an it had an affiliated role in your extra career based activities. It's like because you was a bad man. You were doing you know you were doing other things, and graffiti was part of that. Yeah, I, it was like I never like stopped doing graffiti. I so. I just stopped, like, tagging and um, things like that. Mm. But I'd still... I mean, even if we're in jail, I'd be designing or and doing people designs or designing my tattoo even or mm-hmm. people are paying me, like... Well, to do pieces, that's cool. Yeah, just, like, to, for me to do something. So I'd be doing things. Um, um, and that's still an odd thing. But, so I never, like, actually stopped as such. Apart from, like I said, it just, I had to, like, be doing... So I've got, like, a family at this point, so we went to, like, make sure wherever we're doing, the money were there mm. to look after and... 
Yeah, so the money would be... Do, mm. do, do, how many times did you go to jail? Oh, um, well, it, the, fir the first time I went to jail, like, just for fighting with police, but then it was like... Ten years later, they were like after me. I'd been on the our headlines and news doing the raid on me and um, saying I was doing this and. So it wasn't graph related; it was other related. Yeah, they said I was involved in all this and that and going on about stuff. But yeah, uh, they could never get me for what they were saying I was involved in. And um, but then I ended up getting caught with a gun. Um, so I was like. First time they got me really. Um, and then end up getting in a car chase. So they stung me. And because they after me for all these years, they could never get me. So they used to sting me. And then I got two years for a fucking. Uh, something I didn't even do. They said I'd done a burglary and I didn't even fucking do it. Like that. That burned me head out of that. <laughs> I said I burgled a computer. Got two years. And like, probably burned me head out. <laughs> Everybody was saying, like, oh, you have to think about all things, like, been trying to get you for and all. I said, nah, fuck that. I said, if they think I've been involved in stuff and they haven't got me, they haven't got me. Mm. It's not like fucking as easy as I've got away with this or that. You wanted posters as well for the graph as well, didn't you? Like, this is... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yo, I would have been gutted and like, yo, I'll keep her. That's some memorabilia shit right I'd there. Love, I'd love to... I thought, like, you know, back in there, like, I grew up, we all, like, cowboys and Indian films and wanted dead or alive, like, you know, this gunslinger and mm. whatever. Um, we're fucking... Like, that's what we like with this... The first I heard about these wanted posters, I just... It was the first time I took um, some... I'd just been letting Death Squad, my first crew... And um, so I thought, right, I'll take them to this bush yard. And it's come on top, getting chased all over. I just thought I was the only one who got away. I ridden inside the bus for like about three hours. Like, I went shifting. So I thought everybody else got caught. <laughs> and then I got home. Phones rang. It's one of my boys, like, like, police after it, like, some. Thinking like, oh, he's done about this raid from Bushyard. And then he suddenly said, like, um, no, he says, there's fucking wanted posters, cash reward, uh, for your arrest. We tag, fucking, they've put them around every youth club in Sheffield. Cash reward. Like I said, I felt like fucking, I felt like, Clint Eastwood or fucking <laughs> Billy, Billy the Kid or something. <laughs> yeah, but they, I mean, for, to kids, to a lot of kids, they're just like, oh fuck it, y'all. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take the cash for that because mm. they, 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 you know, you're young and you don't get the the the, 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 the rules of the road. You know, like mm. that's a risky, that's a risky, a risky time. Well, like, it's like I'd love to have one of them posters. It was <laughs> like in, when I were in the cop shop, I'd seen one on the wall in the detectives on their wall and they'd drawn a dagger going from, where they said wanted cash reward blah 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 they'd drawn a dagger mm. going through my name like I would love to like snipe off a wall wow um, is there anything you kind of regret because it sounds to me like uh, like you, you had a pretty slow paced life of lots of things happening all at once that to any normal person Civilian, quote unquote, whether it be graph, maybe you know other work-related stuff, football firms, uh, and family. This is a lot of things going on. Did, did, did any did, did that come with any regrets? I don't know. I've I've done so many things in my life. Uh, I've got like a lot of regrets as well, like from things I haven't done. Really? Like, I mean. There's magazine interviews and things what people turn up to do and TVs and being on phone. Yeah, because can I just say, because that's something that I, I'm glad you bring up because 
Um, the, the issue of graffitism back in the day, where they had a focus front cover on on the Sheffield scene, you weren't you weren't in it. And the same with graffiti wars. There was a couple of times where you would have thought, oh yeah, you should be in that. Yeah, the the graffiti wars they formed me up to to um, to do that. But um, like I said, I was just too busy doing what I was doing at them times. Right. Um, I couldn't be doing that. Um, and it's same um, like another magazine. They just come back from. They just come back. They just be in New York interviewing Snoop Dogg in this other magazine. Yeah. Um. And when they come back, he's one of my mates has brought brought them up to my flat to do that. But at that time, I was going through a bit of a bad bad time with what I was doing, and um. So there's loads of regrets, but like. This. Well, you can't be doing two things at once, can you? You can't, mm. can't, you can't have your cake and eat. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I've done so many things. Even, like, being in a band, I love that, but... I... Music band? Yeah. Cool. What kind of band was that? Well, like, uh, like, kind of hardcore punk, like, like slash, kind of rappy, kind of more rappy. Nice. Like... Like maybe similar to maybe Rage Against the Machine, but more hardcore punk music. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But, yeah, you know, like I start like that because my mate saw so bass player, me, one of my bro- brothers uh, Foster. Mm. So that's how I got into that. But um, same time, I was having my kid, so. Um, I loved it. I proper loved like performing on stage and that. Um, I mean, we were gonna record in studios and stuff, but same time I went to um, me, my daughter. She was just born, so I went to make sure that I was there. So <clears throat> I went like <clears throat> it was hard to like go practicing for the band. And being fully committed, even though I loved it, but obviously, my my, my daughter was just being born, so hmm. I will I also wanted that, and at the same time also I wanted to make sure I made the money still. Hmm. So it would be hectic. Yeah, you can't have these sorts of things happening when you when you may have a craving or desire for the popular side of you know of exposure and creative reward of being revered but then when you've got this other lifestyle that you're trying to keep on the low i think that's the that's the hardest bit for a lot of graffiti writers now coming into this new wave of new generation of street art and and i don't know i'm all about giving flowers to the people that were really bolstering the the credibility of graffiti full stop because I would argue if it wasn't for the likes of yourself, if it wasn't for the likes of many of the others in Sheffield, but also Nottingham, Manchester, London, um, predominantly for for tubes and whatnot, you you wouldn't you wouldn't have this cool, okay, street art culture yeah. now, would you? You know all this like new like all these like new writers and like some people say about oh they're not real graph writers or. Why? Because they haven't done this, or then they call him street eyes, or mm. uh, like I don't think that I think that I think that anybody should be able to do it if they like that. If they can afford to just go out and buy the paint, they don't have to rack it like we had to. Then they just need a look your spot, don't like what we were sort of thing, but. Um, and just because they don't go and do any legal stuff, some people like say, oh, they're not real writers, which I can understand it in one way, but same time, like, um, they're doing the thing, you know what I mean? Mm. But what I don't like is them who went done the full monty from the tagging, the, all the illegal stuff, the full... The full like hmm. the full game, I don't think they should be the ones who then 
trying to make pure money out of doing mm. commissions for doing this and that. And what, and then proclaiming that they have done it when they hadn't? And just like, yeah, when they've not really mm. done all the, like, the things. I mean, I've done all the things, but even, like, if somebody wanted some off me, I I just couldn't. Even though, like, I'd love to get, like, big money for stuff, I just I just don't... I don't think it's right to charge big money. I mean, I, I'd rather just give somebody some... You know, like, if somebody wanted a canvas off me, like, just by them wanting it and because of who I were, I'd rather just give them it or do it them cheap. Yeah, but that's... A, I get you, I get you, and I understand, I understand the principle because if you're giving it for free anyway as part of a release in your... And, you know, the endorphins of going out and bombing or... Um, hitting still or whatever there still has to be that the people when people want something it's because they admire and yeah. there's there should be a value on that right yeah but i i don't i just kind of get a buzz from like i said like just by them who appreciate what i've done like like i've been in jail and they were like, oh, you're a risk. Like, and they've not even been into graffiti. But, but they know you are, yeah. But they were like, oh, I can remember seeing this when I oh, was well, like this age and holding my mum's hand walking through. Mm. It's like, I think majority of Sheffield people, whether they're into graph or not, or whoever they are, I reckon at some point in their life they will have seen mm -hmm. risk. Mm -hmm. Because I do... Uh, easy seen spots, I'll do easy things to be read so they can see my name. As well as like I'll do stuff people don't know how to read, but I'm just kind of happy by seeing some of like the youngsters or the up and coming with a smile on my face or them come up to me and ask me to sign their, their book or, mm. or something. It just makes me feel... I've always liked to give. It's just like how I am. Like, um, I've always liked to give people who haven't got, you know, like, because I never, like, wanted for money growing up because my, both my parents worked. They worked hard, but mm. more, a lot of my friends' parents didn't work, so they stole for money. So I never really, like, needed money as such for certain things. So I got to a certain age when I had to make my own money. But I just like, I've always just like, like to give somebody something who's not got something. Mm -hmm. Like, um, just to fucking, just to do it like, a, I don't know, I've always been kind of kind hearted, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, I think mm. that, that, that resonates in in the character build that we're getting here and the, the fact that, I mean, you've gone through a lot of stuff. You've gone through a lot of mental health. You've gone through a lot of uh, times to reflect. Obviously, being in the pen, you know, you, you do have time to process shit. Um, what's that been like for you? Because um, the, 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 the rehabilitation of that and going through that period. Is it still a struggle yeah. now? Is it, is it still something you go through? So... I think the mental health is the worst of me. I mean, I've like gone, I've, um, I've fucked up on drugs before and gone down that road as well. But um, I think the mental health, like, fucking, I think people with mental health is no serious, it, it's no joke, man. People, like, need to fucking, like, take more concern over people with mental health because mm. it's not nice man mm. like I mean especially with all this COVID that just fucked a lot of people's heads up not being able to go out if they were already like mm. suffering a bit with certain things so it's like fucking it's not an easy thing like mental health to go through, I think it's like fucking, I think it's probably like one of the hardest things I've gone through, like, you know, when I've gone through the depression, mm -hmm. um, 
where it got to the point where I was struggling to like leave the house. Yeah. Yeah, I feel so, you. Um, yeah. I mean like graffiti again, that like that's helped me again mm. just by like sometimes I'm like I said, sometimes I was sure I might be going to a football match and then I just, like, just didn't want to go out. And then, next minute, I might just fucking feel like going out some mad time in the morning mm. with a bag of paint and just fucking hitting some top spot. Mm. Oh, just to show fucking still about. What do, you, uh, what do your football uh, comrades think of you going out and painting? Um, that means a whole different world, isn't it, really? Yeah, some know, some don't. I mean, like, our football family's like, there's, there's some people who don't work, some people who hardly got any money, and then we've got top professionals, workers. Mm. It's a mix, a mixed kind of, um, like I said, these professional people, we still yeah. have firm. Um, yeah. To like people who's yeah, got drug problems to yeah, high paid jobs and yeah. livelihoods. It's like a mix of. I find it so intriguing. Yeah, because often it doesn't mix the, the whole graffiti thing and the, the football world. Um, and the drug, I, I would argue, maybe a lot of, the, a lot of these I, kind of worlds yeah, don't I, mix with it. The, I mean, like nowadays, I think. I think a lot of football, like, people looking at football matches like our world, we organise violence and stuff. A lot of them are on drugs now, and yeah, most of them are sniffing mm. coke or whatever. Um, but, um, like I say, graffiti is, like, more accepting. I like, one bit, some people, like, if he said, like, you're doing graffiti, some, some people would be thinking, graffiti, like, Ugh. Like fucking vandalism, yeah, daubing yeah, on the walls. Yeah, yeah. But then other people think of it as like Banksy and you know um, yeah, realism art and things like that, don't they? Since everybody knows that Banksy, he says though like people seem to look at things different mm. more now. Mm. I don't know. Isn't that curious? That it's like, isn't it strange that that is the case? Because um, arguably, I I, I just. And I, th I said this to you earlier, it's like the whole idea of graph, especially back in the day, it wasn't just the one minute's there, one minute's not there, next minute's there, and the impact of this piece, but it was also the style of its time combined with the use of paint that wasn't actually meant to be used for it. For, for for artistic purposes like that whole thing alone is like well how do you get to the point where you're incredibly good at using that paint with that nozzle when these things were only designed for car related practical related things it's like that back in the day was really it for me not the stencil thing not the not the um the the high end paints and I've got, I mean admittedly it's 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 amazing and we wouldn't want to yeah. go back but there was definitely that that beauty in yeah. you know what I mean yeah it's like it's true it's like like now like people learn about like they go, they're obsessed with like neatness and cutting up and this and that all through his new pain yeah he didn't have that back in the day he he didn't even have that like choice to even do like that. Yeah, you had to get things right straight away and mm. use what you had. Mm. Um, so I'm not in, I don't like these people who are like fucking, who try like, oh, that's not neat enough to, oh, fuck that. Like, I'm not into that, man. I like fucking, I'd seen Score say something, like, and he's saying like something about, oh, like, he likes sometimes when he sees like, sometimes he might do like cutting in and, Neat and this and ever, but sometimes he said like, I think he was score, like he likes it how it like, like the raw edge and mm. like the the um, how it look. That's me. I like that. Like I say, you just had to 
well, with what he had back then, it was different. Yeah, there's a and charm about it, isn't there? There's still yeah. that charm. Even like just doing things in pitch black and getting that neatness, what he had, like mm. um, what you got, what you couldn't do. If you did a mistake, you couldn't like be going over top. You had to like make the outline thicker or, mm. you know what I mean? If you like did a, a line or whatever, incorrect that you could notice it you have to like think on the spot and sort of change something and mm. but like in a way it's like cheating by like these new colors because i mean this this new paint is wicked mm. but um you could just keep going on and on and on until you got it perfect but fucking some people like take three days to do a piece or mm. 20 hours or something like that like, and like you say, you mentioned doing it in the dark and stuff and all yeah. these different obstacles. How many trains? How many trains do you reckon you've done over time? Because to perfect the, the the levels in which you've, you know, come over the over the over the decades, like how many how many how many times do you reckon you've to to perfect what you've got? I just don't know. I just I don't know how many. We've just just done that many things. I can't even remember, you know, like sometimes, like, like I said, when I've lost all my photos and even now when somebody will send me a photo, I'll be thinking, like, fuck, you know, I can't remember that. Yeah. And it's like, it's just mad old things I've done, like, mm -hmm. I just, so not many things, like, and I, like now I try and do things what nobody's done. I've done ambulances, done black cab taxis. Ambulances, you've done ambulances? Uh, yeah. Black cab taxi. Oh, I, I just trying to do anything. Taxis. Anything. What? Not yeah. churches. No, I've never done a church. Thank God for that. But yeah. Wow. Um, so no holes barred. You're to get up. Yeah, to get up. Like, I. One thing I like to see in Sheffield and again, and I know all these cameras and stuff now and buses. Was when we were hitting buses, there were no cameras. But so fuck, man, that, that, that's all the hard work. Breaking yards, doing big throws, pieces, we were sneaking up behind buses at a terminus, doing the piece in a few minutes, so then it was set off, so it was running. Mm -hmm. And just like, there's none of that, like, I mean, I sent you a photo. Mm -hmm. I did that like not long ago. Full side of a bus. Um, I wish I, I wish people were still doing that. I wish they were like hitting this Sheffield tram. If I were like younger, I'd be doing like with the buses, running up terminuses, running up when they're pulling in, people getting on. So then the after run. Because they can't take every tram off. Oh, so like doing it, uh, do it instantaneously, do it uh, yeah. in, live in play. Yeah. And, and at this point, you do, do not try this wherever you're watching this, all right? Do you, you, you've been warned, all right? This is not the place to be uh, advocating that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm, you want to be careful, like, but... Like I said, buses, like... I mean, they've got cameras on every single side, and I know, like, that they record 24-7. Yeah, they really do, don't they? Yeah, because I know people who work on them. Do you, do you really feel that, like, compared to back in the day to now, like, that there, there is such a contrast? Was there more ease back in the day of going into a yard or going into a, a bus depot or whatever? If, if, you know what it was, like, the only... Because I used to go in on my own to start with. The only time I ever got chased out of the bus yard was the time when I decided to take the new crew, and I took too many in. Mm. Too many? Yeah. Mm. And Riots. That's, that's what fucked that up. Like, so, I always think if you take too many, like, your better stuff just, like, sticking to, like, low, mm. low numbers. Because mm. um, then you're, you're a bit, you can concentrate more on the... Uh, yeah. Mm. Even, like, trains, like, the... Um, the first train what we had running from Midland Station, because I lived above it, and I thought, I just clocked where they were put. 
he must have known that they were like laid up there mm. at the time in these early days. But um did him no problem when there was like a couple of us. Then I came one time, I think about six or seven of us they've tried to get on. And fucking they ended up catching me on lines. Just because the amount of people climbing off fence onto the tracks further up. Like, I didn't even know where we were going to do trains, but I did get grabbed, hmm. trespassing on railway, and I had a bag of pain. So they couldn't prove that we were going to do trains and all like that. Hmm. But still, just because of the amount of people, if I had just done it with like a couple, we'd have ended up doing another train that night. Mm -hmm. Wow. Some madness. Crazy times, crazy times. Mm. So, uh, so you want more out of Sheffield? You want more? You want more graph out of Sheffield? Yeah, I want. I mean, I'm just like I'm just I'm a turkey. I'm like I, wherever I go, I always, I always like make sure that um, I'll leave them up. Um, a few years ago, in Greece. Um, in fact, I was like chilling. I didn't even realise until like last week. Um, but we won at Vim's crew from Norway. So I saw big up Vim's. Mm, real tight Vim's, um, yeah. Yeah, so me and one of them like went out bombing with my pain in Greece. But um, yeah, like UK, I want, because it's like 40th like, year, being like doing it. So I, this year I planned on. Um, I planned, this why I've been racking so much paint and stocking up. Because I've been like spinning my paint out, just doing simple, plain fills, but just top spots, uh, simple letters. Mm. But I planned on doing like, I wanted to do at least um, a big full production, but I wanted to hit all the UK. Uh, to celebrate like the 40th year. 40 mm. years in graph. So I went out, so I started just before Christmas, fucking just being hammering it, rocking, rocking paint like fuck. Wow. And the good stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the future's bright. We've got a year of total and utter British begging for mercy. Yeah. My brother, would you like to give any shout outs? Yeah, to give a shout out to the um, Joe Cash Mercury, Foster, Key, Jr. Um, Shine from Manchester, rest in peace. Go in jail, I missed that. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. Rest yeah. Pulse. Pulse, hold tight, pulse. Score. Score. Um, where's Matt Sam? Steve. Carey, um, and Key and Foster, I don't know if I said them. Mm, 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 but, and plays with this crew, Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen. Yeah, man. Nice. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the man himself, Chris. ACT, thank you so much for passing through my yeah, brother. Yeah, man, nice one, brother. It's been fucking good, man. It's been good. Yes. <laughs> it's I'm been enjoying fair, it. We, we, to be fair, we were drinking and having a chat in the pub beforehand as well. It's been a yeah. wicked afternoon. <laughs> Honestly, man, always a pleasure to have you. Yeah. Tea in a pot, drinks the fridge, ashtray on the table. Yeah. For you, my mate. It, wicked. It's a few. <laughs> you all <did>. uh, <laughs> Yeah, he did. Um, uh, listen... Thank you so much for joining us again, Killer Keller Podcast. Smacking oops upside your head. The outlet in was out of fashion. Big shout out to the regulars sharing his caring, you know what it do. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace.